This is Street Chance on SOBN TV. Hello, my name is Timothy Abasofon and here with me is um, Comfort Brother Isaac. We are both your hosts for Street Chance. Coming all the way from SWBN TV. Okay, um, we are already on the street to have real conversations with real people. Yeah, and get ready to have our unfiltered conversations and genuine stories from our community. Let's dive in. Yeah, the highlight of today's conversation is on New Year resolutions. Do you subscribe to New Year resolutions or do you not? We are here to find out from our community. Yes, of course, I do. Um, we do because the earth was made by words, was formed by words. So anything you speak will surely follow you. So like this year, I had my own New Year resolution and I know what I'm saying to later. Okay. Yeah, I do. Because um, I I think this year, yeah, on the first, I just so being unstoppable this year. So I think that's my New Year resolution. That will be because I, from my understanding of New Year resolution about your resolve, your decision, what you want to, what you want to continue in the new year, or what you don't want to continue either in your life or in whichever way you want it. That's that's my understanding of the year resolution. I believe the year resolution because if there is like a garden principle for the youth, so that you can know there is a launch out, there is a launch out, or a launch out. I don't know who is the resolution because. Sometimes I will do something I can plan for myself and I cannot succeed based on a lack of knowledge. What I plan cannot yield good food. I may decide. I say, okay, this new year I'm going to do like this, not like this. That is my new year. That is how I, I normally do my own New Year resolution. The New Year resolution that I made for myself is that as I enter this year, 2024, I, I should meet this life. But by doing this, it's based on the prayer I pray. Some, God can bring out some somebody that can help me out of this present uh, business that I am doing. But it's not my wish. You know? Well, I think in life is according to how you want your life to be. So, the reason you do New Year resolution, but you don't work according to it. Uh -huh. So, the way you uh, want your life to be is how you work. That is what I believe. Oh, yeah. My own opinion about New Year resolution is all about you taking a new decision, a new a new decision first, a new focus, and a new vision. Because as year goes by, so things change. And because of the things happening in our environment, we are being advised to look for your creator, your maker, your founder. This year, I have told God, on my own, I can't make it. But you be my helper, I love to serve you more. I love to praise you like never before. And I'd like to increase my time of service with you more so that I can get more blessed in and flourish. Uh, no, because uh, last year I said, uh, and uh, God helped me have as a kid the plan. So it's about marriage. And God did it for me very successful so this year now it's for me to just work hard to balance up because as i am now i'm sleeping <laughs> there is no money in my but thank god for everything i did it's kind of a promise to myself to kind of improve myself because either i kind of improve myself to do something good or i stop doing something bad Hello everyone, this is Quick Chance on SWB. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to tell you a bit of what Street Chance is about. Street Chance is designed to redirect all things to Christ by highlighting popular opinions and many perspectives in line with the mind of God. So today on this first edition of the program, Brother John Henshaw will be redirecting 
Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. Welcome, sir. Okay, so we'll dive into the business of the day. So this week, we went to the streets to find a popular opinion concerning the idea of New Year Revolution. And now our question is, in a situation whereby many people subscribe to New Year Resolution and some do not subscribe to it, in the light of scripture, what can you see about this? Ah, uh, well, um, you know, the issues of the New Year resolution is something that has been on for a long time. And uh, I guess people do that because, um, you know, it's the beginning of a new year and they want to have a new, the, the sense of a new start. Well, I would say the scripture doesn't really directly, you know, talk about a New Year resolution. But of course, there are governing principles in Scripture that, um, you know, deal with things of decision making. Because the idea of the New Year resolution is basically a decision being made. Of course, just that it is made in a particular uh, time of the year. Uh, it really wouldn't make any difference if it was made in the middle of the year. Yeah. It's still a decision. But so I think we're probably looking at it from the guidelines of, you know, um, when I make a decision, what are the factors governing the success of that decision? And um, if that is gotten properly, especially in the light of the Word of God, then, um, uh, then I think a person is good to go. Okay. Um, so at some point, I, you know, I got to realize that um, people get to make um, resolutions and some questions pop up while we're out there. Is it wrong to make New Year resolutions? Well, I wouldn't say it's wrong. Um, I wouldn't say it's wrong. Um, and maybe I wouldn't say it's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it's really going to still boil down to, you know, the individual, you know, and if a person is making a decision, uh, a positive decision for either a change of life or, you know, enhancing one's life or a change of direction, you know, uh, well, we would agree that people usually do that for some positive reason and hope that that works out at the end of the year. Uh, but we should also understand that a New Year resolution is not a wishy you know, it's not a wishy decision. Yeah. Yes, it's not a wishy decision. And um, um, if you, if a person makes that decision, a positive de decision in life at the beginning of the year, like oh, I said at the middle of the year, it doesn't really matter. But um, I think it would be good to make a positive decision. You know, if it works out, so you make that decision to work out. You make that decision to succeed. And if that brings some form of improvement to your life, then, uh, and then I think um, perhaps I would say it's a good idea. Okay. Idea, you okay. know. Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll be going on a break now. And when we return, we'll be giving you more perspective on what we think in the light of scripture. Thank you. This is Street Chants on SWBN TV. Welcome back. This is still Street Chants, and I'm your uncle, Comfort Isaac. Remember, we did say we went on the streets to take popular opinion. So we've seen the videos. What were you thinking? Well, you know, um, just like the year 
I mean, starts, everybody begins to make a new year resolution. Uh, uh, but, you know, we realize that um, a lot of times uh, people do these things with a good intention, but it never really, if you took a statistics of how many people achieved. Yeah. Yes, I mean, you know, a lot of times it's just, you know, the zeal is always at the beginning of the year and then after some time and that's, that's over. But I think there are few things we can look at, you know, that few factors we can consider um, uh, being, you know, why people's resolutions never really, you know, work out. Okay. I would say uh, many people, you know, poor personal assessments, in other words, their capacity, you know, so when a person doesn't really know what capacity he has, you know, he makes bogus, ex, you know, bogus expectations are made, right? You know, and somebody who is in um, level one in any area is planning to get to level 10 before the year is over. That doesn't really work out. Another thing, factor which is very important, you know, uh, plays a role in why most of these things fail, is the, the lack of knowledge, you know. And in fact, I would say, in most cases, zeal without knowledge, right? And, uh, you know, desire, desire is a strong motivator when a person desires to have something. Uh, but desire doesn't, uh, desire gets you going, but desire would not, uh, desire is not responsible for the outcome. Mm -hmm. For example, I say, okay, this year I want to, um, I want to build a house, right? Or maybe I want to achieve certain milestones in my profession. Uh, I may have the desire, but, um, and yes, desire would get me going. Sure. But the, the, the factors that play a role in the success is the knowledge of how do I get from point A to point B. Right. If that's missing, then I'm bound to fail, you know? So that's why I started by saying zeal without knowledge. You know, zeal is good, but it must know where it's going to. You know, if not, I mean, you know, it, it, it just is a, it's, it's a leap into the dark, yeah. right? And then I think that another factor would be, uh, you know, when we make up our minds to do something, we say, okay, we, we a resolution within us to do something. We tend to forget the fact that there are challenges to that. And uh, we tend to forget the fact that we would have to be tenacious holding on, you know, pressing on to the goal, you know. So I think for me, those three factors uh, play a big role in why people, you know, these resolutions fail, yeah. you know, yeah. Okay, so um, what do you think should be the guiding principle? If you want to look at what I said concerning, um, you know, assessing oneself, you know, you know, God made each and every one of us differently, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, even in science, they say the, you know, in science they relate design to functionality. In other words, things are designed to function in a particular way, right, you know. So that's the same how God to creates each and every one of us. We are, we, are, we are constructed, we are molded to be able to, you know, for a particular purpose. You know, and um, that purpose resonates with you because that's who you are, your identity in God. You know, and sometimes when we now look within ourselves and we, 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 you know, we, we take decisions based on that identity, who we are, who yeah. God has made us to be, you know, that's a very strong motivating force. And it's a very, you know, um, it, you know because you are, you are doing what you are created to do. You know, but in, 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 in saying that, then you come to the perspective, but you have to know your God. You have to, you know, you have to come to the knowledge of your, your maker, you know, because uh, he, he has the original manual for each person, you know, what he had in mind. And the reality is that the more that you relate with him, you go back to him, you know, we all know that man has fallen, you go back to God and, uh, and let him begin to show you the manual, you know. Uh, and as you run with that manual, you know, you are, you, are, you are bound to succeed. So I think the first solution would be going back 
you know, making that connection back to the, to the maker. You know, it says God made man, you know, God created man. You know, so going back to God is a very, a, you know, it's like taking a fish out of water. You know, once a fish is out of water, it loses its essence. Or you take something that should be on land like a tree and then you go and plant it into the water, that's gone, you know. Yeah, so the environment is very important, you know. So when we get back to God, you know, um, we are, we, you know, many people don't realize that. You know, and many people are running on their own steam. That's because, of course, there's a lot of ignorance on those lines. But when a person goes back to God, you are like going back to where you were created from. You know, not a fish was created from the water. Plants were created from land. As long as they remain in that environment, they do well. You know, so when we get back to God, who is our source, then a lot of things fall into perspective. Failure is not failure by itself. There are things that... Uh, are missing why people, why failure comes you know so i think the fundamental thing anybody should do is first of all to return back to god mm -hmm. uh, when you get back to god then you god begins to reveal to you the manual of your life and when you stay in that path you know the path of your destiny you know you you there's there's bound to be more success there's bound to be more success there Okay, so um, another solution would be developing that relationship. You know, now, when that relationship is developed, you have the advantage of, you know, the Lord guiding you, you know. He doesn't only, he doesn't only, he's not only the custodian of the manual, but he guides through the manual. You know, yeah. And uh, People make investments, people, you know, a resolution talks about what you want to do tomorrow in the future, right? A future which you have no control or idea about. Somebody may say, okay, fine, I'm going to make an investment this year in this place or in that place. Only God can tell you whether that investment is going to collapse or not, sure. you know? So that relationship, you know, you have with him, he begins to guide you, right? according to his will, because in the first place you have returned to him. So he begins to guide you according to his will. He begins to tell you, in this matter, this is where you should do. This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. How many people have gone to school and studied things uh, just basically based on, if I do this course, I'm going to be a rich man. But what they forget is that how many people have become rich men and have lost their families? How many people have become rich men and have died? Now, if those people in retrospect could look back, will they be making those same decisions? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So you have that advantage of God guiding you, God directing your life, you know? What about people that have said, okay, fine, we are, we are, we are traveling, I'm traveling for a business trip, you know, and uh, who knows when the plane is going to crash? We all sit down here, oh, this plane crashed, that plane crashed, you know. But, you know, there are stories and people who have experiences and they wanted to travel for so-so and the Lord says, no, don't go, don't travel, right, you know. And they, they stayed behind only to hear that the plane crashed and thing, you know. So um, people who make, when New Year resolutions are made, you have to look at it from a very holistic perspective, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. No man commands tomorrow. God is in charge of the morrow. And he's the one that can tell you, do this, don't do that. So that vital walk with God, right, it's really important. And in my perspective, I think people make small New Year resolutions in a way. Because when you're dealing with, when you come back to God, uh, he doesn't give you a vision according to you. He gives you a vision according to what he can do in you. You understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? So you might be saying, okay, you know what, this year if I can buy one uh, open one shop, for example. Let's say you're a trader, you know. But God is saying, no, this year is not one shop, it's ten. Because you are linked to him. So your ability is, he takes off, you know, he becomes the, he becomes your ability. Mm. You understand, you know. So there are so many advantages in returning back to the maker. It's always returning back to God. You know, that's, and, and, and that relationship is established in Christ, you know, and um we need to understand that. Because let me say something, you know, 
we must understand that there is a natural reality, but there's also a spiritual reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these things are real, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when we talk about coming back to Christ, being the pathway where we are united back, with, that is an established reality in God, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, a person may accept it, he may not accept it, it doesn't change the truth. I mean, you, whatever you think doesn't change the fact that Lagos remains where Lagos is or America remains where America is. You either accept it or you leave it, but that's the truth about it, you know. And uh, we, we, we thank God that um, there, are, there are countless testimonies to those who have, who have returned back, made that relationship, and uh, there are great successes, right? In fact, dealing with God is so, is so profitable because even when you are making the resolutions, you are not making the resolutions alone. You're relating with him, and he's saying, you know what, forget about this, not for you this year. This is where you should concentrate on and all that. So um, you're coming from a, a winning perspective yeah. already, you know. So that's really important, you know. I think, you know, like the scripture says, one with God is a majority, he's a winner, yeah. you know, he's a winner, you know. We have many shortfalls, apart from the fact that um, we ourselves, we are limited, you right, you know. Uh, there are so many things out there which are waiting for us, you know. You, you just have to have the capacity in God to be able to weather both your limitations, because we all have limitations as human beings, and then the ex both the internal limitations and the external limitations, you know. So when we return back to God and we have a vital relationship with Him, you know, He, he you know, we, we remember the song they used to say, leaning on the everlasting arms, you know, an old song, say, leaning on the everlasting arm. You know, God didn't create man to be independent of. God created man for a relationship, for a union. It was based on the union man was given dominion, right? You see, the desire to win, the desire to succeed is a desire born of God. You know, God put it when he says, told man, he says, um, you know, let him have dominion. That becomes an instinct in every man to do well. That's why you see people pushing to be successful, pushing to, because that word is, it's, you know, like God said, let there be light, and there was light. So when God says, let man have dominion, your, the psyche, whether you, you know him or not, it's ingrained in the natural process that man wants to, you know, if he's, there's a river here, he wants to go, he can't get there in time, he will make a bridge, you know. People don't make that connection, but that's the word of God in man from the original creation. Let him have dominion. You understand? You know, so I think on that foundation, every other thing basically uh, can be built on that. Without that, it's just a wishy uh, self effort. Uh, and uh, the question some people would ask there, but somebody made a resolution and succeeded. That's okay, you know. But what happens next year? What happens two years from there? The resolution you made and failed would now wipe all the success you think you have made. You know, of course, we there are countless stories to that, you know. But we want to be on a secured ground, and that ground is to return and have that vital relationship with God. You know, I think that's a that's more a logical self-interest, really, right? You know, so I, that's I think that's what I would like to say. Thank you very much, Brother Henshaw. Thank you for the words, you know, the advice, the encouragement. And I'm coming to you, viewers, whether you're born again or you're not born again, we'd like you to know that there is a need to return to your father, our maker, our creator of everything. You have, you have listened to the, you know, the popular opinions of the people and you have heard what Brother Hensel has fed us, you know, fed us with, so we would like to encourage you, if you're not born again, that you get into developing a relationship with the Father. Thank you very much, Brother Henson, for joining us. Thank you, know, you so coming much. Coming to the show, for being with us on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope to have you more some other time. Thank you for joining us on Straight Chance. I am Comfort Isaac. Goodbye. This is SWBN TV.
This is Street Chance on SWN TV.